excitement. We had a lot of excitement last week, preparation for this. Um, important announcement, probably the most important announcement I'll make today. Restrooms are right out there if you need the restroom. And cookies are right back there if you need cookies after lunch. Um, past president, Dr. Mark Frost, uh, his celebration of life will be April 30th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at their home in Melrose, Florida. Everyone's invited to attend the porch party. And uh, it'll be a really uh, a great opportunity to share stories about Dr. Frost and, um, and celebrate his life. So I know there was a, an email that went out with the directions and the map and everything. If you need that, you didn't get it, you need a map, see me after the meeting. Very important, uh, no lunch meeting next week. We have a social. I'd like uh, Lee Davis to come up and do a pop-up for us about the social. Thank you very much, President Ike. So next Wednesday, May the 4th, we'll be meeting at the restaurant in Riverside, which some people also know it as Riverside Liquors. So we will be collecting don donations for the Methodist Children's Village. And my short list right now, they service preschool age children. So they are asking for preschool age board books and preschool age art supplies, but we will send the flyer out in an email. So we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. May the fourth be with you. So we will not meet for lunch next week. We'll meet at Riverside Liquors in the evening. And um, as Lee said, we'll send out an email to tell you what you need to bring to donate. Board meeting immediately following the lunch meeting. Uh, all West Jacks members are invited to attend. And the district assembly and conference is next, is this weekend, this coming weekend. Alberta, before you sit down, would you like to come up for Family of Rotary? Sorry, Alberta. Um, following Alberta, Rahul Sharma will give the uh, Surgeon of Arms report and introduce our program today. Thank you, President Ike. Um, Rotarians, our President Ike, um, his brother James passed away and the funeral was last Friday. So we sincerely Give our condolences to you and your family, President Sherlock. Also, um, I don't know of any other family of Rotary information, except I uh, gave a call to Alton Yates. We miss him, and uh, he misses us, and hopefully he's on Zoom today. But you know, there are several of us that are just getting back coming to the meetings. So if you get a chance, give him a call. And that's my report for the family of Rotary. Thank you, Alberta. Thank you. Building on the strong tradition that is Rotary, I think it's fair to say that today we are reminded about the importance of service above self. Each week, I'm honored to uh, welcome community patrons and guests and and today's a really special day. And so I'll keep my Sergeant at Arms report brief so we can get to our program. But before I do that, I'd like to also uh, take a moment to express my thank you and gratitude to our broadcast engineer, Joe Springer, for helping us put on today's program. Joe Springer, how about a round of applause for Joe? The simulcast feature enables our Rotarians that are here and at home to be engaged with content and programming. And Joe brings that every week our Rotary Air Traffic Control Tower. Many of our students that are here today with their families were greeted by Stu Irwin and Patty Chapman. That's our Rotary Control Tower. They ensured that you all arrived here safely. How about a round of applause for those two? These, this has been a tradition uh, over a decade where we are introduced to our community's finest, brightest, and our future. I'd like to share a Rotary inspiration before I formally introduce Dr. Randy Thornton to come up today uh, to lead us in today's uh, ceremony. They say the devil is in the details. The growth of Rotary was largely due to how well details were handled in the early years of this great effort. Chesley Perry, Rotary's first general secretary with unbound energy, and love of all things Rotary, 
Chess recruited and organized an incredible rotary staff, which not only effectively managed this organization's growth, but it helped inspire it. And as Paul Harris once wrote in his book, This Rotarian Age, he compared that nearly a hundred strong and its nearest thing, rotary volunteers are like a beehive I have ever saw among humans. This throbbing heart of rotary, the great central organ that pumps the constant pulsing stream of rotary achievement and ideals into 80 countries of the world. Here is the vortex of where that lifeblood comes back to be translated and enriched with direction and inspiration. And today we are going to be enriched and inspired by student achievement. At this time, I'd like to welcome up to the podium a great leader and one who has brought this great tradition to our club, Dr. Randy Thornton. Dr. Thornton, please come on up. Thank you, Raul. Um, I don't think for all of you guests, you will meet anybody with more enthusiasm than our Sergeant at Arms, Rahul Sharma. I mean, from greeting you to the introduction here, phenomenal. Well, let me say my own introduction. Um, I am thrilled to do this. Uh, we've been doing it almost 20 years as far as I remember now. Our club has been honoring students from a group of um, West Side schools. And this is far and away one of my favorite meetings in all of the Rotary year. It's our chance to honor, today we're honoring 12 overachievers. Uh, I mean, I gotta be honest, it's um, phenomenal what you guys have accomplished. Um, for those of you who are unaware, we've done this forever. We honor uh, six West Side high schools. Today, it's um, uh, Riverside, Baldwin, Paxson, West Side, Frank Peterson, and Bishop Snyder. We have two students from each school. We've done this, um, and it's worked out very well. Two students, two seniors from each school, one for accomplishment in math and science, the other for accomplishment in arts and language. Um, first of all, before we get into everything, a few thank yous. Uh, number one for our committee, the Youth Awards Committee. Um, uh, this year, special thanks to Chris Berge, who will be coming up and helping me with the introductions. Uh, Tim Johnson, who you hear from in just a few minutes to give an overview uh, for all of you unaware exactly what Rotary is and uh, all about our little bit about our four-way test. And a special thanks, I mean, beyond special for Patty Chapman as our club secretary, who many of y'all met when you came in, is everybody who's a club member knows how effective Patty is and what she does. But for this day, uh, it wouldn't be happening without Patty's, uh, Patty's extreme help from just getting everything set and the trophies made is phenomenal. So thank you to her. And the other special thanks are to the school guidance counselors. Um, there is no way this day would work without the assistance of the guidance counselors from each school. And uh, every year they have gotten me the names of the students in contact with the different teachers and getting all the information, the amount of material that needs to be collected, uh, the biography sheets, the attendance, so we know who's coming. Uh, so a special shout out, let me tell you um, who's done this. And this is, an interesting year because everybody is a veteran. We've been doing this for a number of years and every year one of the school has somebody new in guidance. This year made it a lot easier because all of the schools, they're veteran counselors who've helped me with this in the past. Um, quick introduction, um, and some of them are here today uh, from Riverside uh, High School is Mr. Michael Verity. From Bishop Snyder is Drew Schmel. From, from Frank Peterson is Deborah Thompson. And the others, there are other representatives, but these are the ones who are my direct contacts. From Paxson is Michelle Mullen, uh, Baldwin, the Angela Kirk, and uh, Westside High School is uh, Doris Tucker. So to all of these individuals, I can't thank you enough for making this day successful. A little bit about what's gonna go on logistic wise. Um, first of all, uh, I'm gonna call up Tim Johnson in just a minute to give a brief talk to introduce kind of the overview and get the flavor for the start of today. 
Uh, then we'll proceed with the introduction of the students. And what we're gonna do is do one school at a time. I'm gonna start and we'll call up one, um, one school at a time and one student at a time to come up. Um, and we'll get into the details of them when I get started, but please be aware when we do the introductions, you guys, the, the amount that you have achieved is phenomenal. And if I started listing everything that y'all wrote down on these sheets, we would be here till this evening, um, just for 12 students. And it's phenomenal. Some of these, you know, it's just two little pages. Some people had to add three and four extra just to get through the extra curriculums. And it's uh, phenomenal. So please don't feel slighted if we don't list every single thing. I'm trying to get the highlights and things that just seemed, you know, especially interesting, but all of you are incredible achievers. Uh, and at the very end is another highlight is we have drawings for um, college scholarships. We have eight $500 scholarships to award. So I'll have more about that at the very end of the meeting. But to get started, I'd like to call up um, Tim Johnson. Tim, uh, everybody in our club knows Tim very well. He's been a longtime member of our Rotary Club. But for those of you who don't know, Tim is the executive director for the Jacksonville uh, Police and Fire Pension Fund. Uh, this, it's a, I, know, I was literally astounded at how big this, this thing is. It's a $2 billion, billion with a B, $2 billion fund. It provides retirement and disability benefits for uh, over 5,400 uh, police, uh, police officers, firefighters, and their beneficiaries. So uh, Tim's phenomenal at what he does. He uh, carries as much energy almost as Rahul um, and has been in that role for six years here with Jacksonville. Before he came to Jacksonville, he was the executive director for the Allegheny uh, County uh, Employees Retirement System. Uh, and all in all, Tim brings 25 years of experience in um, finance and management to, to Jacksonville. He's um, not only a longtime West Side, uh, West Side Rotarian, he's a member, oh gosh, all you do uh, is a member of the Elks uh, Leadership Jacks class of 2019, He's a trustee level member of the Jack's Chamber and was recently elected to the board of the Science and History Museum. Um, Tim graduated from Duquesne with an uh, undergraduate degree in business administration and has a master's in organizational development from uh, Robert Morris University, a sponge for knowledge. Uh, please, welcome, uh, please welcome Tim Johnson. What an introduction. I love it when they read it exactly the way I wrote it. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder to myself how many lies I could embed in that biography, and they would just read it like it was the truth. Thank you, Dr. Randy Thornton. It's my pleasure to talk to you just for a few minutes today, and in particular to our youth on this awards day. Uh, Rotarian Dr. Thornton asked me to give a couple of minutes on what it is to be a Rotarian and in particular, the four-way test. And I am particularly uh, humbled and honored to be replacing Rotarian Ed Pratt Daniels, who normally takes on this task. Uh, let me be, be, begin with a statement. I'm sure many of you have heard it. Those who stand for nothing will fall for anything. It's often misquoted. It's often misattributed. Is it from Alexander Hamilton, the statement and father of these United States? Or is it some other guy whose name just happened to be Alexander Hamilton? More important though than how it's said or who said it first is what it means. It means that your decisions, our decisions, are guided by a set of values, values that show you the path forward, regardless of where you are, which you are confronting in life. Values that help you live with direction and purpose. Values that guide your benefits or <laughs> your beliefs, your attitudes and your behaviors. For Rotarians, our values are expressed in a four-way test, like the Pledge of Allegiance or the Apostles' Creed. It is a statement of values that we memorize and recite each time we assemble. 
The four-way test reminds and confirms, both individually and collectively, that what we stand for turns into what we say, and what we say turns into what we do. The four-way test is like a four-way stop. Anybody who's gotten a license to drive a car probably studied before they took that exam. And one of the questions always is, what do you do when you encounter an intersection with four stop signs and two cars? The reason why you're tested is so that you're prepared when that time comes, so that you don't have a traffic accident. Instead, traffic flows freely. Let me give you a per personal example. It's hard for me to believe that in a couple of months, I will celebrate 45 years since graduating from high school. 45 years since I was about your age. 45 years since I was a student. When I close my eyes, I see myself in that cap and gown. Our colors were blue and gold. I see myself with about 800 other students on that hot astroturf, waiting to toss that mortarboard up in the sky. We're sitting there on those white chairs, listening to our commencement speaker declare, the person you are tomorrow, you're becoming today. A person guided by the values that were instilled in you by this institution. That declaration not only applies to students, it also applies to Rotarians that test themselves regularly by asking four questions. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? These answers help us grow and enhance the people and the groups we interact with. The four-way test is a test of the values, the values of what it means to be a Rotarian. Thank you. Tim, thank you so much. That was great. Um, uh, let's get started, have some fun. Uh, we're gonna uh, do one school at a time. I'm gonna introduce the, um, uh, the first school. As I get warmed up for this, if I could call Rahul up and uh, President Ike to assist me, Rahul is gonna be making sure we give the right trophies out to the right student. And we'll be feeding them to Ike so he can present. As the students come up, we call you one at a time, please come up this way so we don't trip over any of the, um, the uh, visual aid stuff. So if you can come around and just come right up to here, it would be great. And then once we're done with the introduction, please stay till the end, and then you can go back to your seat and we'll call the next student up. We're gonna start with um, uh, Riverside High School. And again, representing Riverside today is longtime guidance counselor and uh, consider a friend now is uh, Michael, uh, Michael Verity. Our first student, is uh, our awards winner for arts and language, Ms. Hannah Super. Hannah, um, oh gosh, she has over 15 hours of community service, primarily with a Haitian food and clothing drive. She's very active in uh, softball, in addition to the Latin club, the photography club, and I didn't know this existed, was a mental health club. I gotta tell you, as a pediatrician, a mental health club is phenomenal because the amount of, ever since the past two years, uh, the amount of anxiety and stress that these teenagers have seen since the pandemic is phenomenal. So hats off to schools that set up a mental health club. I think that's great. Um, she has got the highest GPA in an organization called AVIB4. I had to, I had to look, I wasn't sure what that was. I had to look that one up. It stands for Advancement Via Individual Determination. It's a college readiness program. And Hannah achieved the highest GPA in that. Um, it was obviously successful for college because she's uh, 
develop a, G, a GPA of 3.9 out of a 4.0. She has been awarded a college scholarship at Georgia State University. So will obviously be attending Georgia State, planning to major in business and wants to minor in real estate. Her career plan is to um, become a realtor and eventually invest in, uh, invest in real estate. Uh, our arts and language award winner from Riverside, uh, Hannah Super. Our math and science award winner from um, uh, Riverside High School is Ms. Jade Bennett. Um, Jade is a member of National Honor Society. She's the Exchange Club Student of the Year. Wow, uh, she's been an honor roll student all four of her high school years. That's not an easy accomplishment. She's been awarded for academic, academic achievement by Gamma Beta Belay. For those, that organization, for those of you who aren't aware, it's a um, youth recognition awards program for the highest achieving African-American students. So um, congratulations to you there. Uh, Jade has um, had maintained a GPA of 3.7 out of a 4.0. She plans to attend UNF and study uh, business and accounting. Um, she plans a career to open her own business and become a financial analyst. Also of note, it was interesting, um, Jade uh, wants to become or is an artist and wants to eventually display her art uh, to the world by having it shown in various art museums. So the talent is endless. Uh, our math and science award winner from Riverside, Ms. Jade Bennett. Next, I'm going to call up Chris Berge to do the next few schools, and then I'll be back. Good afternoon. We'll start off with uh, Frank Peterson, and uh, they're represented by Deborah Thompson and Jessica, and I'm going to Mastromaco, I think. And I forgive me if I mispronounce. Uh, the first awardee is for math and science. It's Capri Smith. Come on and she's got her parents, uh, Christina Robert Smith and Grandma Pamela Smith. And Capri, a uh, lot of community service, 141 total hours of community service. And uh, like most of these, students, their uh, leaders. Uh, she was secretary of the National Honor Society, uh, president of Future Farmers of America, student council member, a senior class officer, vice president for fundraising. Um, that'll study you well and volunteer work in the future because no one likes to do that. Um, and her, her overall class rank uh, was number one and with a total GPA of 4.5 out of 5.0. Um, she wants to study microbiology and be a veterinarian. Um, and she's planning to attend Brigham Young Idaho University. Congratulations. Our arts and language award goes to uh, Daniel Supa and his guest is Arlie Davis. Sorry about that. I like to walk around. Oh, he's also tied uh, number one in his class. Uh, same GPA, 4.5 on the scale. Uh, he spends a lot of time uh, up in the air. He uh, has a private pilot's license, which uh, is, is, takes a lot of work, especially at, at your age. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to learn, um, all the rules of the road up there. Uh, how many hours do you have? 40 some hours. So that's, yeah, you have to have at least 40, I think. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he wants to go to Western Michigan University and study aeronautical science and be a pilot. Um, if you want to fly for free, the Navy is recruiting. Uh, been, been, been there, done that. It's a good way to get a couple thousand hours. Uh, and you don't pay for a dime of it. Uh, 
And if, if you don't have those aspirations, the Air Force and the Army will take you too. So uh, congratulations. Okay, the next school is Westside. And uh, math and science is Devin Brown. There it is. Okay, Devin, uh, a lot of, again, a lot of community service hours, 86. Uh, leadership, again, senior class president, uh, yearbook editor, uh, goalie for the soccer team, and uh, GPA, you know, with all those activities, uh, 3.875 on a 4.0 scale and ranked second in his class, National Honor Society, class uh, sol the solidatorium, I always mispronounce that. And he is, uh, now this is probably a first for this club, but he is planning to attend Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College and study livestock production. And he wants to become an agricultural loan officer. Uh, his parents are also here, uh, Danny and Kathy Arkins. So congratulations. Our arts and science rep from West Side is Kurt Reyes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, this uh, is an artist. Uh, he is into drawing, painting, craft making, singing, uh, after school programs, uh, guitar playing, yearbook. Uh, he is ranked first in his class, uh, the 4.33 out of a 5 0 scale. And uh, he is planning to attend UNF, get a fine arts uh, degree, and then wants to become a professional artist, hopefully in New York City. Uh, and because that's, let's face it, that's the art capital of the United States. So you don't count movies. So congratulations. Uh, for Baldwin, just, just shut up. I don't, think, I don't think anybody from Baldwin made it. Um, again, uh, I'll just go real quickly over a lot of a lot of community service. Kayla Robinson is the uh, leader. She is a captain on the volleyball team, the softball team, and the soccer team. Second in her class, and wants to be a physical therapist. But you know, again, a stellar athlete and a stellar student. You know, most of these people are, or most of these young adults are not you know, one faceted, they're multifaceted, they're, they're into athletics, they're into all kinds of outdoor activities, uh, outside activities, and oh, by the way, they're at the top of their class too. So uh, they also must be great at time management. Um, and then uh, the last one is Logan uh, Pereira, and he is the arts and uh, language person, but he wants to be an IT guy. So figure that out. So. Again, thank you very much and congratulations. Thanks, Chris. Um, next school uh, we're going to recognize is Bishop John J. Snyder. Uh, representing Snyder today is a um, longtime aide for me, is Ms. Drew Schmel. Our first, uh, first recipient is for math and science uh, is Amelia Tiemann. Amelia, Amelia is accompanied by her mother, Lupita. Um, Amelia has, oh gosh, 70, 70 hours of community service, uh, primarily with debris cleanup uh, in the Florida Keys after Hurricane Irma. Uh, also is assisted with the Rachel Kenya's uh, 5K Memorial Race and is an assistant volleyball coach. Um, she's very active in tennis and is also captain of her volleyball team. Uh, she's president of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Now I should know what that is and I wasn't quite sure. So I looked that up and it's, um, yeah. it's impressive. It's a Catholic uh, organization that encourages members to grow spiritually by offering person to person aid to the needy. So well done there. Um, like all these students, she's an overachiever. She's treasurer of the National Honor Society. 
uh, vice president uh, of the Science National Honor Society. She's a scholar, scholar athlete award winner, has maintained a GPA 4.35 out of a 4.0. Um, unbelievable. And this probably is another first, because I look up where this college is. She's planning on attending Harvey Mudd College, uh, which is, yeah, I wasn't quite sure, but it's impressive. It's a um, small engineering school in California, in Claremont, California. So it looks like um, uh, Amelia wants to study engineering and be an engineer. Uh, our math and science award winner, Amelia Tiemann. Next up from uh, Bishop Snyder is Miss uh, Kayla, uh, Kaylin uh, Gagna. Uh, she is accompanied by her mother, Gabby, and her father, Daniel. Um, gosh, Kaylin has uh, 40 hours of community service, uh, actually collecting and delivering baby blankets to the Navy hospital, also in tutoring and creating artwork for a lost family member. Um, she's active in the Columbian Exchange Garden Club, the Birding Club, I love that, um, member of National Honor Society. She's uh, a multiple award winner, um, uh, art award winner, both in uh, excellence in art and also the Silver Key Art Award winner, um, and also been awarded for excellence in English. So well done there. Uh, Kaylin has maintained a GPA of 4.2 out of a 4.0. Oh. Y'all are smart. Um, plans to attend Northland College. I had to look up some of these. That one's in Wisconsin. So cool. Uh, is going to plan a career as an ecologist. Um, wants to study ecology and environmental science and plans a career as an ecologist for a um, national park. Also of note, uh, Kellen um, mentioned that she loves uh, art, reading, and writing. And uh, is planning on creating or has done creates art of animals and nature. In addition to all that, has written um, or is writing a fantasy book series. So may that be successful. Uh, but our Arts and Language Award winner from uh, Bishop Snyder, Kaylin Gagnon. And our final school today uh, to be honored is the Paxson School for Advanced Studies. Uh, representing Paxson today is um, Ms. Dion, uh, Dion Clayton and Ms. Linda Bajelia. Our first uh, award winner is uh, our math and science uh, recipient, Ms. Jasmine Jones. Um, and Jasmine's accompanied by your father? Yeah, is um, uh, uh, Eric Jones. And Jasmine, oh gosh, the amount of community service here, 200, 200 hours of community service. Um, primarily as a summer camp counselor, a nursing assistant at St. Vincent's, and a Jacksonville zoo aide. So a variety of things. Uh, she's been co-captain of her varsity golf team um, for the past two years. She's a member of Girls Who Code. That's another thing I wasn't quite sure of, but it is exactly what it sounds like. It's girls who want to excel in IT. Um, I looked up their mission is to close the gender, uh, the gender gap in technology and to change the image of what a um, programmer looks like and actually does. So Girls Who Code, I love it. Um, she's treasurer of the National Honor Society. She's a member of Science National Honor Society. Mu Alpha Theta, which is the Math Honor Society. Uh, she's a, another Gamma Beta Belay Award winner, which is member for the highest ranking African American students. Uh, she's won numerous, numerous underclassmen awards in multiple subjects. She's maintained this is this phenomenal to me a high A honor roll, a high honor roll, all A's for all four of her high school years. Um, I can't imagine. Um, with all that extracurricular too, uh, phenomenal. Uh, a GPA of 4.597 out of a 4.0, plans on attending the University of Miami, uh, study business technology, and plans a career as a software developer. Our math and science award winner from Paxson, um, Jasmine Jones. Uh, 
our final recipient today, uh, last but certainly not least, is our Arts and Language Award winner from um, Paxson is Miss Angelina Eidson. Angelina is accompanied today by her father, uh, Chris. She, uh, now this still blows me away. She has over 550 hours, just imagine that, 550 hours of community service. Um, primarily, it's just phenomenal what she's done, is um, primarily with the rethreaded organization, which if those of you aren't aware, it's, it's their mission is to bring awareness and to help eradicate human sex trafficking. Um, she started, I understand, collecting her own t-shirts and has then coordinated, I don't know how you'd find all these, but 500 pounds of t-shirts she's helped collect and raised over, um, gosh, $30,000 for the rethreaded organization. And I understand it really uh, helped increase her passion for eradicating sex trafficking. So uh, that's wonderful. But also not just that, but has been a camp counselor, a uh, vacation Bible school counselor, uh, this, to me, is really neat, is the honor, I understand, is she become, um, for Paxson, a school ambassador, which is really prestigious um, and highly competitive, I understand, uh, but allows her to be the liaison between Paxson and the community, in addition, is the face for the school giving, um, giving tours. Uh, so, neat there. Um, the highlights, uh, and this is where I could go on forever and ever, this was several pages worth, but I don't know how you find the time. When did you sleep? The, um, but is, was um, elected Miss Paxson, uh, which is really good. Uh, she's been uh, part of the Paxson Chorus for a while and is the soprano section leader. And her talent, I gotta tell you, her talent as in choir is phenomenal because she was admitted, I found that she was admitted to the Florida State, uh, or the Florida All-State Choir. Um, so I took a chance. I went online just to look to see if you could see anything posted. Um, and there is a video of her singing. Um, it's phenomenal. I, I mean, I encourage you, this girl can sing. Um, uh, she's been a youth band worship leader uh, since seventh grade. She's publicist and secretary in student government, National Honor Society, Science National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, Math Honor Society, another Girls Who Code. Um, She's been awarded multiple awards, the President's Volunteer Service Award, the Peter Marsh Foundation Silent Servant Award winner. Um, she's been awarded, this seems really cool thing, the Paxson Caritas Award, which was for the uh, student that best exemplifies the love of humankind and charity. So that's wonderful. Um, and a top Eagle Award for her school in numerous subjects. So. Uh, it goes on and on. Um, GPA of 4.68 out of a 4.0. Uh, plans to attend University of Florida uh, and study criminology. Wants to pursue a career as a federal investigator. I think you're going to succeed. Um, and just mentioned she's fiercely passionate about leaving her community a better place. Um, and I just started thinking about that with that one comment is just all these students today would be perfect perfect future Rotarians. I mean, they just, now I'm serious, service, service above, thank you, service above self, but our, um, uh, our arts and language award winner from Paxson, um, uh, Angelina Hudson. And now for one of the most fun parts of this entire day, is we get to award some college scholarship money. And now how this is gonna work, um, I've got uh, the names of the students from each school in bags. It's been tradition, our little brown bags. Um, we have the names of the two students from each school in each bag. Uh, I'm gonna have President Ike draw the name from each, uh, each bag. Don't feel slighted if you don't win on the first go because we're gonna take all the people who didn't get drawn on the first go, put them into one bag and we'll have two more to draw at the end. So these are all for um, $500 uh, college scholarships that our club will award. I will have all the information on how you can uh, achieve that, how you can um, uh, get that all carried away. Please come up to me afterwards and I'll have a sheet with information on how you uh, can collect your um, college scholarship. 
but let's have some fun and award some scholarship money. First, from Westside High School. Oh. We tried to do this with Mike Crumpler years ago and his hand wouldn't fit in the bag. From West Side, Kurt Reyes. Put these up here. We'll eventually get them back. From Bishop Snyder. Bishop Snyder's award winner is Kaylin Gagnon. From Paxson. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? From Paxson, Ms. Jasmine Jones. From Frank Peterson. Ms. Capri Smith. And from Riverside. You're doing this very well. Uh, Ms. Jade Bennett. And we're gonna draw Baldwin. I will get the award win to them. In case they're watching virtually, uh, Logan Pereira. Don't, don't despair. We still have two more to draw. From Bishop Snyder, Amelia Tiemann. And also from Baldwin, Kayla Robinson. Draw one more? Okay. And a bonus one. From Frank Peterson, Daniel Supa. Here. For all of you scholarship winners, please come up to me afterwards. I will have information on how you can achieve this. And again, thank you all for coming today. This is really, it's a neat event. And for the school administration, your parents and friends, um, all I can say is well done, well done. I feel really confident in the future of our city and our nation. You guys are talented and I, uh, I am impressed. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thornton, Chris Berge, Tim Johnson. Let's give them a hand. They do a great job. And West Jacks Rotarians, I'd like you to stand up and honor these young adults. Thank you very much. Um, don't forget board meeting right here, right there, right after the meeting. Next week, there's no lunch meeting. May 4th, uh, the social starts after work at Riverside Liquors. The following week, May 11th, our speaker will be uh, Mark Lamping from the Jacksonville Jaguars. So congratulations to the, all the students, they're all winners. Uh, Frank Shy, please lead us in the four-way test. Everybody today learned what the four-way test was. I'd like for y'all to join me in the things that we think, say, and do. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Our quote of the week, no matter what people tell you, Words and ideas can change the world. Robin Williams. <laughs>